Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. I'm so glad you're here. So today we're going to work on some primitive projects, primitive country. This is a ironing board, just a little small ironing board that I got from Goodwill a while back. And I loved it because it was just all natural wood and it's a blank canvas for me to do something with. So I decided I was going to paint the base black and there we go. So I went ahead and did the base flat black and then I sanded it down and sealed it with some clear sealer. So the top I'm going to take a little bit of antique wax and water it down with a little bit of water about half and half half water half antique wax just to lighten it up so it's not so dark and thick and it's going to be a light as you can see here just a light light stain look on it and that's what I want I don't want it too dark because I'm going to be putting on some decoupage paper that I got from Zazzle and you don't want your background to be too dark because it will wash out the whole thing and I just really like it to uh, be nice and bright and then be able to darken it with some wax if that's how I want to do it. So I just fitted on the piece the best I could. I wet the edges and then I went ahead and just kind of gently tore at it so that it wasn't just a straight line. It had a little bit of some ridges on there as you can see. And then I'm just going to take my Mod Podge and start in the middle and I'm just putting a little bit on there and I'm going to get my decoupage paper added in the middle of the board. So there is a little pull down section uh, at the very bottom that I'm going to take that little fresh eggs part of the decoupage paper and put that down on the little drop down part and I'll do that in just a little bit but I want to finish putting this on so I'm just just in short little pieces taking a little bit of Mod Podge and putting it on there and then you have to be very careful with this uh, paper because it's very thin and so once it gets wet it's easily ripped so if you're trying to get out any wrinkles or anything like that it's best to I'm finding that it's best to take some saran wrap and put it over the top and then you can rub it down or even use a roller or something over the top of it. I don't have a roller so I can't, but um, that seems to get out those wrinkles without ripping the paper. Now I'm just taking a little bit of sandpaper around the edges and in a downward motion I am just sanding off those edges. Here's the fresh eggs part of the sign that I put on there. I thought that would be a cute surprise. If you wanted that out, you could leave it out or you could push it in and not be able to see it. But I thought it would be kind of a cool thing to use that. So then I'm just taking my paper and gently going over. Now this is dry uh, underneath and I'm just gently going over it to lighten it up and distress it a little bit and just make it look aged trying not to bear down too too hard but I also want it to um, look look somewhat distressed so I got some pieces that tore and uh, some holes and that is fine I'm just want this to be a distressed piece anyway so I'm okay with that now I'm just going over the top of it with more Mod Podge to seal it all in so it doesn't tear anymore and it's easier to clean once you put that on there you can dust it and kind of give it a light damp cloth wipe down if you need to so I like to have my pieces sealed for that reason I recently purchased this from Goodwill. It's a fresh farm fresh eggs sign and I think I paid yeah four dollars for this. I really liked the shape of it 
and uh, the frame. I liked the, the natural wood frame that I could paint it any color I wanted. I went to a different Dollar Tree that I normally go to and I found this gathering place removable sign and I thought uh, I'll pick it up and I'll figure something else out that I want to do with it and not even thinking that I had picked up this picture frame and when I got home I looked at the two together and I said I think that'll fit I think it's gonna work and so here we are so I took the staples off the back and taking it apart and realized that that wasn't even glass in there it's like a plexiglass or a Lexan so it's very light and it's a little bit scratched up but you can't tell once it's on the picture frame. So I put a coat of plaster paint on the back of the chicken sign and I am now painting the frame black. I'm going to go back and distress it and then seal it before I put the whole thing together. All this needed was one coat. This uh, folk art black paint is very pigmented and it covers super well. I may, when I was drying it, I may have touched it up a couple times with my paintbrush, but really it doesn't need, need much. I took the semi-dry paintbrush, it had a little bit of black paint on it, and just went over the top of where I'm going to put my little sign, just to give it a little dimension, some distress looking. I thought it would look pretty cool to uh, have a little bit of black streaks there so I went ahead and did it all over. I went lightly at first and then as I got it on there I decided I wanted it a little darker and so you just keep going over it until you get your desired look. Now there are some times that I use Mod Podge to stick these on if they're not going to be behind glass or uh, you know pressed between something but this time I'm not going to because it will be in a picture frame and I think it will stay just fine. I uh, just centered it where I wanted it on that mat and just rubbing it down to make sure that it stays. Sanding down the frame a little bit and giving it a little bit of a distressed look. Once that's done, I go out and spray that with my clear spray. And then while that is drying, I'm just taking my watered down antique wax and going over the top of my gathering place. I realized that the gathering place adhesive sticker uh, was a little bit yellowed and it didn't quite match the background. So I just added that antique wax and it seemed to make it all blend in nicely. I cut a couple swatches of this homespun material, it's the black and tan that I have, and I made little triangles and I'm sticking them on opposite corners, just two of the opposite corners of my sign, and just gluing them down. And I left them frayed because I think that looks really cool and rustic. So they're just a little bit, little bit of uh, frayed pieces that are glued on there. And those will be underneath the, the plexiglass. So I did that on both corners. And then I uh, closed up and sealed the picture frame. I added a backing and a hanger. And then I'm taking a little bit more of my black and tan homespun material. And I'm going on the outside and making it look like this ribbon or this material was wrapped around the picture frame. I think it adds really cool look to the frame, uh, a real primitive country look, and I like doing this with my picture frame sometimes. So I did the same thing on the opposite corner of this one. So two corners have material on the inside and the opposite two corners have the material on the outside. And this is, looks like it's wrapped around kind of like a little present. Then I made a little 
bow, just a tiny little shoestring bow, and I'm gonna stick that on to the corner. And I think that adds a nice touch. This little washboard is another Goodwill find. I got it for $4 and I really like it with the sunflowers but it does not match uh, anything in my house and it doesn't match what I sell in my booth. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little makeover. First thing I need to get this crazy raffia bow off. I do like the raffia bows but this one just seems to overpower the whole thing and I wanted to do something different. So I used my, my glue gun, or my heat gun, and I heated up the glue on that and it came right off, no problem, along with the sticker for uh, Goodwill. So then I'm going to, because I don't want to paint at all on the metal, middle part, I'm just covering it up with some masking tape, making it all covered because I know how messy I am of a painter and I'll get it on there somehow. So it's totally covered. So I'm taking my folk art black paint and I'm giving this a uh, one coat of the black paint all over. Once that's completely covered and dry, I'm gonna go back in with some Vaseline and hit some spots where I want to resist the next coat of paint that I'm going to put on. This is a good thing to do when you have paint underneath that you don't want to come through if you're going to distress or sand back this the piece. Uh, you can put some of this on and whatever paint color you put over the top of it, it will resist in those spots and when you wipe it down, it'll take that paint right off for you. So it's a good way to distress it without using sandpaper and bringing back the color that you don't want. So I just hit it spots where I wanted it and now I'm taking some burgundy paint and going over the top of my black paint. I'm gonna give this, uh, it's actually gonna get two coats. The first coat never covers as well with this. So I just do two coats of the burgundy paint on the front and the back. Now that that's dry, I'm taking a rag and it's just a dry rag and I'm just rubbing over the whole piece. So as I hit those spots that have the Vaseline on them, it will just, just really easily take that right off. I did bear down a little bit on some spots just to get it to get more uh, distress and more of the black to come through. I think this works really well and I love to do this when there's that paint color underneath that you just don't want to bring back because it won't match what you've got going on. So I just keep rubbing it all over and eventually I get the desired effect that I want. Now you can take a sand, some sandpaper, uh, light sandpaper and go over it and distress it some more if you want to. Uh, I did that just a little bit around the edges but not too much. Now I have these double uh, galvanized buckets. They're, they're together, they're welded together. And I decided I wanted to attach these to my little washboard. I thought it would look so cute. So I'm gonna take that uh, antique wax that's watered down and I'm just gonna go over it and kind of dull down the, the galvanized look on there and make it match the washboard a little bit more. I'm going to put a hole in the middle bracket to attach with a screw to my washboard. I'm adding a piece of netted ribbon that I have. I think I got this from Dollar Tree. And just gluing that on. And then I'm taking some of my favorite homespun material and cutting it down into pieces that I want that will fit and making just a just a messy bow with it just taking scrap pieces and crisscrossing them and stacking them in different ways 
and then just using a piece of twine and tying them together. And it makes a really cool, just messy little bow. I take a little button and I'm going to put that in the middle. And then I'm putting some foam down in my little galvanized buckets along with some curled pit berries. I'm adding some moss over the top of the foam to cover that up and just adds more interest and dimension to uh, the pit berries in the bucket. Giving them a little trim and then going over to the other side and finishing that one. I hope you liked my projects today. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a favorite. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.